Greetings and good afternoon, beautiful people all over planet Earth. So, reconditioning the conditioning effect that so many of us have grown up with. And the reason I bring this up today is um, I actually had a conversation with my mother and just her really kind of expressing her fears onto me about security, financial security. And it, although she's been very good um, over the past couple of years, there are moments like today where she cannot help herself and be asking me all these questions about money, how I'm doing financially, maybe I should get another, like get another job. Um, Cause what I do here at my home, in my garden, in my life is it, that's work to me. It is a full-time gig. And, but in her mind, she doesn't see that as productive. She doesn't see that as bene something beneficial, which is a shame because it is so beneficial for me. Um, although a lot of people in the world share her views today that you cannot equate self-worth unless you have a certain amount of money in the bank and I have let go of that conditioning years and years and years ago and and I will admit in the beginning um, I, I would be grappling with that as well um, wondering oh can I make money can I do this and can I can I you know provide for myself and the thing that worked to get me over that hurdle is you must surrender and have trust in the way the universe works because if you project that fear out and that trepidation about whether or not you're going to be able to support yourself you are only going to hinder your own progress and so for those of you wanting to leave this condition system, this, you know, basically a slave system that keeps people in a type of condition slavery, which has been in place forever in order to remove that from your life, you have to trust and you have to surrender. and. And, and, and that's, that takes huge courage. But when you do it, you realize that, you know, you're okay. I mean, some days might be better than others, um, but you're not, gonna, you're not gonna miss out. And in fact, you'll probably appreciate even more the value of money and the value of abundance when you are creating this abundance yourself, when you are bringing in money yourself and, and abundance is not just referring to as money. Money absolutely has its place and money is not evil. It is simply a form of exchange, a form of abundance. Yet we treat money as if it gives us a pass and permission to act a certain way, to treat people a certain way, to, to view the world in a certain way and so money in a lot of respects has served um, as a detriment to people but it also can serve in a, in a beautiful as way a beautiful way as well so money is not evil money is not a sin it is simply a neutral modality in which we can use as barter and exchange living on this beautiful crazy planet earth and so however if you are tired of being in this system where it's unfulfilling to you you don't feel any happiness with what you're doing and you are literally doing it because you feel like you have to then shouldn't that be the the time to question yourself to stop 
and change direction and do something that is fulfilling, do something that is rewarding, whatever that may be for you, to do something satisfying, something that makes you feel self-appreciation and self-love and value for your time and energy. And, you know, that, that can take a real effort to go from one way of thinking to another, more freer way of thinking. But I would encourage you to do so. And, and so it was quite, you know, funny today because I reiterate to my mother that I'm absolutely content with where I am in my place in the world and the way I generate forms of abundance into my life. Um, I have to um, reinstate that with her at times and assure her that I am completely okay. And, and it just seems to be that because she comes from that generation where money is everything and it always has been it has completely governed her life and my father's and they have been total workaholics and and like literally she has put off retirement time and time again where she's actually now retiring from being a nurse for more than 30 years um in june so like i i can just see how she is having some trepidation about that decision and what's she gonna do with herself and you know she's already thinking about other ideas and um, other ways she can be busy and generating income and I just think oh my god just relax for a little while and do some self-reflection and and be gentle and kind to yourself and and it's okay to not do anything for a little while or for as long as you want so long as you are living authentically then that's all that matters but for her um just to slow down and smell the roses and, and enjoy what she has created for herself so you know and and it's no judgment on my part i mean people can do and live as they please but I think when people try to influence your personal decisions or your personal choice or they give you their opinions on what you should be doing with your life because they believe it's correct then I think they need to take a time out and self-evaluate and do some inner self-reflection about where they are in their life so everybody is always quick to give you their opinion about what you should be doing but I'm completely content with doing as I do and I have been for a long time so um, just thought I'd share that with you some inner reflections and how to deconstruct these conditions that have been in place for a very long time more and more people every day are moving away from this system and, and are surrendering to, to higher powers, which they should, which is good. Having faith in the unknown and having that you are always taken care of. This has been predetermined. You've come in with, you know, these agreements and these choices already penciled out like on a sketch pad and, and you can color this life in any way, shape or form. So, just knowing that there is always a higher plan and there's always more than what meets the eye. So out in my garden, got my little apron on so I don't get covered in clay. And uh, I'm actually making my outdoor altar. And this is just an example uh, for you guys that if you are desiring to have one, well, you can do one. And my altar, and, and it doesn't cost anything. This is the thing. If your will to make your altar is strong enough, you will make it and the universe will provide everything you need. And so just to give you an example, what I've been working on in the past week um, is tools and things 
so here's my fire pit i will get that spray can out because that'll be a disaster um this is my altar space this was a rusty old look at all the rusty things i have around here well i've used the end of that spray can and painted that black that is going to be my outdoor altar and i want to make some tools for that altar when i actually perform rituals i take a nice little cloth and cover that but i have made some plates here out of um clay from one of my dams and you can see i've actually put my hair in it hair is actually good for binding and here is another gosh i hope i don't break this i'm not gonna even try and turn it over but it's written in arabic and basically it says just to sum up um surrender to god just breathe and allow and trust within the higher knowings and the higher powers um, and there's no love greater than the love of God the love of the universe and all is how it should be so I am about to condition this space and uh, you know set it up beautifully but I'm growing some bougainvillea um, from cuttings and this is the direction that it's going to be in i have always done my rituals in a north north easterly direction at about 20 23 degrees north northeast and actually this is the direction that i come out at 4 30 in the morning um, a couple of months ago where i had this sighting right here antares rising up here in the north northeast and then them blinking stationary uh -oh. I'm running out of memory but I was in tears standing right here when this happened and I just couldn't believe what I was seeing one UFO and another and so to me that's a good sign that this is where the altar is going to be in that direction because when I saw that it filled me with such love such devotion such such gratitude and appreciation it was such such a blessing to have witnessed that um so this is where it's going to be so yeah making some tools you know so you don't have to go out and spend money you can just you know get savvy and a little bit clever and and try your luck i'm lucky i've got a fire proof here and i'm just about finished a bowl this is one of my offering bowls i'll probably make about four of those um you know some little spoons and things because i'll be making my own incense to put out there but there's one of my little bowls i'm cheating i'm actually using a bowl and um, forming around that just because i want to get these tools going and i actually fired this little ball last night it's actually it's actually okay it's got a real chink sound to it so um, I'm looking forward to seeing how the bowls go, but I want to make sure they're completely dried out before I go and try and fire them so I don't destroy anything because I'm guessing I'm doing guesswork with the heat of the fire and you know, I want to make sure they're dried out completely. So just thought I'd share and I hope that this inspires you um, to, you know, look around in your own local area. And make your own outdoor altar yeah <laughs>